choose Christ. You have to accept him. You have to apply the blood. And the blood shall be to you in verse number 13. And the blood, see that verse 13? And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the what? When I see your good works, when I see your church membership, when I see your good intentions, when I see the Blood without shedding of blood, there is what? No remission of sin. When I see the blood, I will do what? 
Does it say I might pass over? I'll think about it. I'll come down and see how good a people you are. When I see the blood, that's it. Doesn't matter who's inside that house. I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Now let me just say this. All the other feasts the children of Israel would have, they all took place when they left Egypt. But you don't leave Egypt to get the Passover. You don't, people say, oh, I'm going to get saved. I'm going to get my life straightened up. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You, you, don't, get, you don't get out of Egypt and then get saved. You get, everybody gets saved in Egypt and then you get out of Egypt. Amen. Amen. Right. Honestly, it's so dumb. People, uh, people want to, uh, they, 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 they they want to. They play right in the devil's hands. They want to get everybody cleaned up first, and then get them saved. It doesn't work that way. You don't. You don't get. That's what religion does. We're going to get you out of Egypt, and then we'll tell you about Jesus. No. If you repent and bring forth fruits, meet for repentance, and prove that you mean it, and show us that you're out. You give up all your sin, then we'll talk to you about Jesus. <coughs> Wrong. Passover feast, the Passover took place in Egypt. Everybody gets saved. If you get saved, you got to get saved in your sin. And then afterwards, we'll, we'll move, we'll get out of Egypt afterward. But even though they got out of Egypt, did all of Egypt get out of them? Never did. Never did. And it won't for us until we go to heaven. We're always going to be dealing with it. But how many of them came out of Egypt? All of them did. Amen. All of them that lived through this Passover here. The Bible says here, now it goes on. It says, and this blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt and this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Now here's the feast. He said, now that you're, he said, I don't ever want you to forget this time. Can I tell you something that as Christians, we're never supposed to forget about him saving us. Don't ever get over your salvation. Don't ever get over the blood. Why do you think, why do you think we sing so, so many songs? There is a fountain filled with Blood draw from Manuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. That's why we're supposed to talk about the blood of Jesus and sing about the blood of Jesus. Can you imagine these churches and places where they take the blood out of their song books? They don't want to talk about the blood. Can you imagine a preacher saying, well, the blood's not what saves you? No, without the shedding of blood is no remission of sin. He said, I want you to remember this. They'll say, oh, that's a bloody religion. No, uh, it, it, no, don't, don't, be, don't, don't be upset when they say that. It is a bloody faith. Amen? God's blood, Christ died on Calvary, the perfect sinless Son of God, and without that blood shed, there is no salvation. So how do you know if you're saved or not? Is the blood applied? It's not how good you are. It's not how you feel. It's the blood of the Lamb. Amen? The old preachers used to preach this all the time, and we hardly ever hear about it much anymore, but we got to have the blood. Look what he says. Now, he says, now afterwards, he said, this ordinance is to be forever. Seven days, verse 15, shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be what? Cut off from Israel. What was he talking about? The same thing as what we read about in 1 Corinthians. Wait a minute. You said that's New Testament. That's, that's, that's the gospel aid dispensation. When they said cut off from Israel, that's not talking about. He's saying you separate them from among you. He said you sep put them outside the camp until they repent, until they get right. 
That's what being cut off was talking about. He said they would be cut off from Israel and the first day there shall be an holy convocation and in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them save that which every man must eat that only may be done of you. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread for in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at even, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 1 and 20th day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. You know what that's saying? That's saying that uh, if a stranger wants to partake of this, they can be saved also. Amen? And so he said, though, but the, the, the same rule applies. You shall eat nothing leavened. In all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood is in the, ba the blood in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into you and to your houses to smite you. By the way, the destroyer is sin. The Bible says the sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. Well, we ought, to, we ought to have the right attitude about sin. Sin and leaven represent the same thing here. And, and the, talk, the idea, he said, I want you to get rid of it. And he says in verse 24, And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when you be come into the land which the Lord will give you, according as he hath promised that ye shall keep this service. Look at verse 26. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean ye by this service? You see, they weren't there. But he says, Then you shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the house of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our, house, our houses, and the people bowed the head and did what? And worshipped. Why? Because it was a reverential, reverential thing. They were, they were acknowledging the fact that God had saved them. We ought not to be afraid of that word saved. We ought to, and people say, how do you know for sure you're saved? Well, the blood's been applied. I know the Lamb of God. Jesus is my Lamb. My, the blood's been applied. Now, verse 28, And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. If you continue reading, you'll find in the remainder of this verse, this chapter, you'll find that the death angel did pass over that night. And every house where the blood had not been applied, the firstborn died. Death visited. You know what the Bible says, and we're going to read it, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. You know, the law couldn't save anybody. All the law did was condemn. There had to be a lamb. In the Old Testament, when they would offer that yearly sacrifice of the lamb, all that lamb would do was take care of the sin for the past year. They had to keep doing it every year. And the high priest would take the lamb into the Holy of Holies, and no one could go in there but the high priest. That's why he actually had a string tied around his ankle and had bells on the bottoms of his gown that he walked, and they would listen. And if they didn't hear the bells, they would tug on that string to make sure he was still alive. And if they didn't get a response from him, they would drag him out. Because if you went in there to get him, you'd die. That's the Holy of Holies. 
Jesus was our priest. And he took himself into the Holy of Holies. The Bible says the veil was rent in twain. So now that it's not just the high priest that can go in there, but we, you and I can go in there now. It's a big deal. Amen? But he says, but he says in 1 Corinthians 5, Christ is our Passover. And he uses that to illustrate why Christians need to purge out the old leaven. Because we're to have a continual feast with Christ. It's a daily thing. It's not just, it's not just once a year. It's not just every once in a while. But we're to wake up every single day mindful of the fact that we're not supposed to have leaven in our life. We're supposed to be pure and clean and right before God because Christ is our, is our Passover. And that's, that's, that's the analogy that the Apostle Paul referenced in correcting the New Testament church at Corinth when it came to their sinful behavior. He went all the way back to the book of Exodus. I don't understand this modern Christianity that wants to disassociate from the Old Testament. We, I don't have a problem with the fact that Easter time is the Passover. We're remembering our Savior, Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter number 12, just real quick, I'll just show it to you, and we'll, we'll be done. But the one time the word Easter is used in the Bible, and now I'll open, I'll read to you here what someone said about it. Acts chapter number 12. Again, the word here says, Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king, the Bible says, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now there's the word, that's the one time you're going to find the word Easter in the Bible. And uh, in, in that reference, I'll read just to you one comment, one fellow, he said here, uh, on that use of the word Easter. He said, this, this, and I quote, there never was a more absurd or unhappy translation than this. That's the, that's the people, and people don't say, what commentary do you study? What, well, I'm just telling you, here's what the commentary said. The original is simply after the Passover. The word Easter now denotes the festival observed by many Christian churches in honor of the resurrection of the Savior, but the original has no reference to that, nor is there the slightest evidence that any such festival was observed at that time when this book was written. And it goes on to try to say that the word Easter is of Saxon origin and that it's a satanic word. The same people that will say that are the same people that will say Monday, Tuesday, when every one, of those, every one of those days all come from the lunar calendar from, and, and are, denote false gods and paganism. But they want to jump on the word Easter. Oh, you can't say that. Hey, you're talking about Estrus. You're talking about the goddess of fertility. And the word Easter is translated the word Pascha or Paschal, which was the lamb. So all we're talking about when we're talking about Easter as Christians, it doesn't matter what somebody else came along and created the word that was similar to that. And so we want to tie the words together and say, oh, you can't say that. Hey. And we get weird like that. It's Resurrection Sunday. Whatever Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. Amen. But this is, this is we celebrate and remember the Passover. Amen.